Hey guys, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'm in Luminar Neo and I'm talking about the five different tools that I use for controlling and enhancing color in Luminar Neo. There's a lot of powerful stuff. I've been using these tools. They're actually tools that were also in Luminar AI. So I've got, you know, more than a year's uh, practice, if you will, under my belt. And these are the five that I find myself using time and time again. And I foresee using time and time again in Luminar Neo. Now I also include one additional tool that's a great complement to all these other tools and I'm going to share that and at the end I will actually show you how I edited this photo. First let's walk through the different tools. Here's a photo. I've already cropped it and the first tool that we're talking about is Develop. There's a lot of powerful cap capability in the Develop tool and specifically I'm talking about the color section. So in this case it was a nice sunset out of New Mexico. I'd like to warm that up a little bit, maybe give it a little bit of a tint, something like that, and then maybe a little bit of vibrance. Those are the primary tools that I use within Develop, temperature, tint, and vibrance. And depending on the image, I'll use different amounts of each, and I may, with some, I'll take the temperature to the left, but I pretty much always take the tint to the right. I kind of like a little bit of that magenta cast, especially if it's a sunset. And honestly, magenta being the opposite from green, I don't really like that really green look unless it's like a very much a natural, like a grassy field or forest or something that you expect to have a lot of green. However, bottom line, temperature, tint, vibrance, very big deals. Now keep in mind, there's additional tools here that I may complement those moves with. So like in curves, if you saw my curves video, um, I come in and I might do some things. Uh, this is the tone curve, but you've got color controls over here where you can come in and do additional things. So you just never know um, what might work. Like there, a slight bit of blue into the midtones has given me a nice little image and I might come back and say, okay, now I wanna go a little bit warmer and maybe play a little bit of a, I don't wanna call it a game, but a bit, bit of a dance between things like that where I'm trying to sort out exactly the look that I want for the photo. But using those in combination, very powerful way to control color in your image. That's number one, develop. And number two is in the landscape category and that is golden hour. And that is just a beautiful tool I use all the time. The thing to be aware of is to me, it's like an accent piece. It's not really something that necessarily stands on it on its own. If there's already some warm tones in the image, like there is here, there's some warmth in the sky and in the clouds and some warm spots of the sunlight hitting those distant hills, then it's great at accentuating the warmth that's already there but it doesn't really create warmth where none existed. So just keep that in mind. I think of it as an accent piece, and frankly, it's something that I usually use in combination with whatever I've done and develop. But that's number two, a golden hour, super powerful, but keep in mind, kind of an accent piece in my opinion. Third one is one of my favorites, and that's toning, also known as split toning, and it's basically uh, a great way to adjust either the highlights or the shadows, pick a color and drop a specific amount of saturation of that color into that tonal value in the image. So if you look, you've got highlights and shadows, and I'll do a tutorial on this. I've had some people ask, and I've mentioned doing it as well. But basically, in the highlights, you just drag the saturation slider. It basically turns on, and what it's doing is saturating the highlights with whatever hue you've selected here. So I've got it on the warm hue, so all the highlights are going to get warmer and warmer the more I drag the saturation slider. Be careful not to go too far. You might end up with a really pink looking photo. But again, it's a great way to accentuate color that's there. And I think it's a great complement, again, to the things that I may have done already in the develop tool. And I also may use it in combination with a slight amount of golden hour, as I previously mentioned. So all these tools can be used in combination. Just be careful as you start to stack edit on edit on edit, that combined effect can get pretty intense pretty quick. So just be careful. But number three is toning. Number four is Color Harmony. I just absolutely adore this tool. I've used it literally ever since it was first in whatever version of Luminar it came out in. But you got Brilliance and Warm. So Brilliance is kind of like a blunt instrument, as I like to say. Um, it's kind of like an intensity, uh, like a combination of saturation and vibrance. Everything gets more intense as you drag that. So be careful and warmth uh, will just allow you to adjust that temperature. So I'll typically use warmth a little bit, um, but I'll, I'll use brilliance a little bit more sparingly simply because I don't want to overdo it. But it's a, it's a great and powerful tool here in Color Harmony. Color Contrast basically comes in handy when you want to lighten or darken certain tones. So as you drag the amount to the right, whatever hue you have is getting darkened and the hue that's opposite that on the color wheel gets lighter. So an easier way to show that in this image is to drag this over to the blue. All the blue stuff gets brighter and the stuff that's opposite of blue gets darker. It doesn't look very good or necessarily work in this image, but it can come in handy on some images. 
Split color warmth, as the name implies, you pick either warm or cool colors to accentuate them. So drag warmth to the right and it's bumping up the intensity of the warm tones. Drag it to the left and it kind of neutralizes them. And cool is the opposite. If I go to the left with cool, the cool colors get a little bit more intense. And if I go to the right, they get a little bit neutralized. And then my favorite piece of color harmony is of course color balance. I've talked about it forever. It's just so fantastic. But you separate tonal zones, if you will, highlights, shadows, midtones, and you come in and you can pick a color to drag into any of those tonal values in the image. So cyan and red, magenta green, or yellow blue, just lots of power and flexibility in adjusting an image. On a sunset like this, I might go into highlights, give that a little bit of red, maybe a little bit of magenta, just to give it some of that kind of a sunsetty tone. And if you look at the before and after, you can see there it is quite a bit more blue. And here it is, a little bit more of that magenta look because I dragged the magenta in the highlights and also added some red. So those are all super powerful tools. Another tool that you would have probably expected me to talk about first is actually color. And the reason I didn't talk about it first is because I'm basically using these in this video in the method, or excuse me, in the order in which I tend to use them in real editing. So I, I do develop first. I might go to golden hour, I might go to toning, I might go to color harmony, I might come back to color. To me, color is great at certain things. This top part, saturation and vibrance, is a little bit redundant from what you have up here in develop. If you recall, you've got saturation and vibrance there. So if you've already used it once, just be careful not to overdo it because it can become a bit over the top. It, these two, saturation and vibrance, I think of as blunt instruments. Again, using that same term, but saturation, just everything gets intense. And vibrance is basically, uh, if I turn off saturation, uh, oops, there we go. Uh, vibrance to me is kind of like popping up the intensity of the non-dominant colors. That's why I tend to use it a little bit more uh, because saturation just kind of is like boom and vibrance to me is a little bit more subtle. So that section of the color filter is really to me a, like a blunt instrument, whereas HSL is more about control. This is where you can go in and adjust the HSL, the hue, the saturation, or the luminance of any of these colors. So perhaps in this photo, I might go into the saturation of the blue, and maybe I wanna bring that up a little bit. Maybe I wanna bring up some of the reds and oranges as well, and that might be a nice complement to a little bit of vibrance too. And to help you subtly kind of pop the colors in an image, there it is before, and there it is now. It's pretty light what I've done, but again, I think of this as a finishing tool. That's why it's number five in my list because I don't necessarily come out of the gate and say, ooh, I wanna pop the colors and go straight into color, hit saturation or vibrance, or get into the individual HSL channels. I tend to do other things first and then come back around to this and touch up primarily with HSL. So overall, it's a lovely tool, very useful. Again, I tend to do it a bit sparingly, especially that top section, but the bottom section, HSL, where you individually adjust those color channels, super useful for giving you great control over an image. And now in Neo, because you can mask in tools and use them again and again, you could come in and do all kinds of things in one part of an image with the HSL channels and then use a tool again and mask it in somewhere else and do a different thing. So lots of power, lots of control. I love that about Neo. Now, the one tool that I think of as a great complement to all of these is actually super contrast. You can adjust highlights, midtones, and shadows contrast. If you guys, guys haven't seen my previous videos about super contrast, I'll definitely include it in more videos, but this allows you to adjust those tonals, uh, tonal areas across the image, which is also gonna have an impact on the way colors look in your photo. So I might do something like that possibly, and then come in and do some color adjustments. But trust me when I tell you that um, if you make those color adjustments and then apply super contrast, it will have an impact versus not using super contrast at all. So let me close that and let me go to my edited version of this and show you how I actually edited this photo using some of the tools I've talked about today. Okay, so here is my final edit. I actually went for a very vibrant, warm sunset look in this photo. And you can see that I used seven, seven different tools. I started in develop. You can see I did some adjustments to light there, you know, highlights, things like that. I also went into color and did a little bit here, including saturation and vibrance, uh, but primarily temperature and tint. I did not do anything in curves here. And then after that, I went over to Accent AI, and that is, Something I think you gotta be careful with, it's a tool that I don't use all the time, and when I do use it, I try to use it a little bit sparingly. I went to 34 here, but it can really have a huge impact on your photo, so just be careful with it. But if you look at the before and after, you can see that it really impacted more of the light levels, but it also will pop a little bit of that color as well. After that, I went to Structure AI, and I did a negative structure mask across the sky, and then I went into Landscape, used a little bit of Golden Hour. I've got 11 here, so 
fairly light. After that, it was over to Color Harmony. And the big move here was just adding magenta into the highlights. In fact, I'm gonna pull that back a little bit. It's funny, I edit a photo and I love it, and then I look at it a day or a month or a week later, and I think, oh, that's too much. So don't hesitate to edit your photos, let them bake for a little while before you share them, because I'm gonna to have to come back and adjust this. There's a little too much color in it, even for yours truly, uh, and I do love my color. I don't think I did anything else here. No, I didn't. So I skipped the rest of Color Harmony, but that highlights adjustment and color balance really made a big impact on the overall tones there. There it is, not quite as magenta, and there it is, it adds a little bit of that nice kind of pink look, which I like. Then I went into Super Contrast, and you can see here, let me show you what that did. There it is before, and there it is after. That's an example of what I'm talking about. The colors are popping a little bit more because I've added contrast in all these different tonal areas. So it's a great tool to come back and kind of finish, and then it might cause you to go back in and make some further refinements or adjustments to edits that you've made before. But it can really pop those light, uh, those different zones of light, if you will, those tonal values. So be aware of that and keep in mind, it may cause you to say, oh, you know what? I really need to go adjust the colors. Uh, and that's what I ended up doing here at the end is actually going into saturation and vibrance and doing some reduction there because it was a little too intense overall. I don't think I did anything in HSL, but I will double check and no, nothing here specifically. So I came back with my blunt instrument, but I went left so I unblunted it or whatever, but it was a little too intense even for yours truly. It was looking like that, which I do like, but I came back in. Now I might give back a little bit of that just because I like it, but anyway, point is that's how I edited this photo using some of the tools and the techniques that I talked about in this video. So keep in mind those are fabulous tools for adjusting colors in Luminar Neo. Lots of power, lots of control. Also just keep in mind the things I talked about, some of them are very good at complementing some of the other ones. And especially if you use it with something like Super Contrast, you might want to come back and do some refinements to your uh, slider moves later because that contrast pop really does impact the way colors look in your image. Hope that gives you some ideas, my friends, about how to use these tools in Luminar Neo. Thanks for watching. I'll be back soon with more videos. If you have any requests, let me know down below. I got a lot of Neo videos planned and coming. I'll be getting to do them as soon as I can. Until then, you guys take care of yourselves and adios.